first a big hello to my class so dear student you all know we are passing through a very hard time nowadays so therefore you all are staying at home and we don't have any regular classes but still then we have to manage ourselves we have to cope up with our studies we must get go properly with our studies and uh, as you all know we are assigned uh, to go with the video classes or some google classes with some assignment we have to complete our tax as usual manner okay so therefore today i have decided to make a video uh, to guide you in the first for the first chapter of your history class 7 uh, there i have prepared a lecture for you i have thought to prepare a lecture for you and the first chapter deals with tracing changes in thousand years tracing the changes through a thousand years what do you mean by tracing changes now we have to discover that what changes have been taken place in a thousand years and this thousand years is not from now from now this 1000 years is from 700 to 1750 ce that is common era earlier it was used to be ad okay so we will be dealing in this chapter sorry in the entire book from 700 to 1750 ce and there we will see that what sort of changes have been taken place through the time span so dear student here your chapter begin with two map two map have been depicted one in the first phase and another one is in the second phase in the first phase the map have been depicted by an arabic cartographer al idrisi in the year 1154 ad okay and another have been depicted by a french cartographer in the in the year 1720s 1720s okay between the time of 20 to 29 1720s and here we will see that how the changes have been taken place in even in the map as well so see in the fast map we can see clearly that how the south india and even sri lanka have been depicted in the upper part of the map okay but another map in the year 1720s that has a significant change and that may be uh, appearing quite similar to the present day map as you see today so this is the case of map that you see change you can find a change here okay so this is how changes have been taken place in the history in the different aspect of our life whether it may be your map whether it may be your geography whether it may be your history whether it may be the domain of politics economics and so many things of your day to day life so you have got a word cartographer what the cartographer the people who prepares map are called cartographer so here you you see how uh, how the developmental change have been taken place over a 600 years after 600 years there will uh, you see a sea change a dramatical change in the map work as well in the map making strategy as well so this was the context of map another one has been given another subunit that is your uh, new and old terminology so one in the group asked me terminology sir what is terminology dear student terminology means different kinds of words that are used in different in the in the different specific context or specific subject suppose you are dealing or reading history then you have some historical words if you are reading geography you have some geographical words like peninsula plateau plains these all are 
geographical words or epithets or terminology. In the same way, there are so many historical words are also there. Country, these different things are there. So here I will tell that how different words are also changing. You may it may be look wondrous to you, but be uh, appearing very surprising for you that how words are also getting changing over the time. Yes, the words are also changing over the time. The words are not changing. The language is not changing only in vocabulary, only in their uh, grammar. Rather, they are changing even in their meaning also. The same word you are using today that may not be same some hundred or uh, some thousand years ago. Are you are you understanding what I'm saying? So a number of words have were also there in the past and that may not be same that we are using today. That's why we are trying to tracing the different thing in the history, trying to capturing, trying to discover the different thing in the history. So let me cite you an example, let me give you an example, the word Hindustan. So dear student, one such chronicler named Minhajuddin Siraj, Minhajuddin Siraj, who happened to be a great chronicler, a great writer during the Sultanate period, who had used a term called Hindustan, he had used the word called Hindustan in a very different context that is used now. Hindustan may you consider the entire India today, the entire India, the complete modern nation still today. Yes or no? Yes, of course yes. But Hindustan, according to Minajuddin Siraj, he had used in the context that Hindustan confined to the area of Punjab, Haryana and the land between the Ganga and Yamuna river. Ganga and Yamuna river where there was the strong hold over of the Sultanate dynasty, the Sultanate empire. The Sultan, the Muslim rulers, they had strong hold over, they have strong domination over that area first or primarily and later on when they settled down properly there they started invading often the different peripheral territories the different area close to them close to them okay so with their invading policy with their attacking policy different areas of india also march with their territory and that area also now can to be known as Hindustan. Who is our area of Hindustan? So, Delhi, Sikh Punjab, Haryana, or Ganga and Yamuna River ki bhi jo land tha, that was only uh, that was only come to be known as Hindustan. But soon after that, what happened when the Sultanate people invaded different peripheral or different Kari Kari jo areas tha, that were also being invaded by them and that emerged that march with their land and those land were also considered to be Hindustan. So you see how it was Hindustan then again the Hindustan changes after some years or after some hundred years or after some years. Then came Babur. So after the downfall of the Sultanate, after the when the Sultan people became weak and incompetent, there was the invasion of the Mughal people to India. And Mughal ruler, the prominent ruler of Mughal was Babur. He laid the foundation of Mughal Empire in the country. He established the Mughal Empire in the country. And during his time, the Indian land, the Indian land was was extended to the different parts of the country and therefore what happened that land also considered to be India and we can find the evidence from his autobiographical sketch his autobiography autobiography means the life account of Shoma written by himself okay if you write your uh, about your life then that is called autobiography and biography means if you are writing about the life of some other people that is your biography so in the 
autobiography of Babur, we can know that entire India has been considered in Hindustan. Here, written about the flora, fauna, the animal world, the plant world, and the different themes of India, and he considered it to be Hindustan at the time. So, dear student, you see that how Hindustan term has been changed over the years. Change over the years. You are seeing the things now. How this is changing. Then this is one. Another such word is your foreigner. Foreigner means what? Who is a foreigner? Now we refer to someone who is not belong to India. Someone who is belong to other country, not belong to India. But in that time, in the ancient time, the medieval period, it was considered that someone who is not belong to your house, sorry, not not belong to your village. That means a person who is stranger or a person who is outside from your village or outside from your locality, he was considered to be a foreigner at the time. That way, in, o in Odia we say Videsi. Okay. And suppose I am from Balangi and staying at Banjnagar. So, if I would have been that time, I would have considered to be a foreigner. Okay. So, this is foreigner and the foreigner there is in, in Hindi it is for the sea and in Persian it was called Aznavi, Aznavi, okay. So this was the context that it was and the people from the same village or people from the same time they were never foreigner to each other. Okay, so this is how the words, the different terminology, different words have been changed over the time. Are you marking properly? Getting properly? Yes. Okay, so it is complete. Then, what is the other word? Like the other word is how the different things that I shared with you, you know, how, how do we know about history? In class 6 also I have told you so many times. What are the different things you know about? How can we know about the history? Dear student, I told you so many times that history always based on true city, always based on true city. It based on facts. So therefore it always demands certain evidences and proofs. Without evidences and proofs, we cannot call the history as history. History will simply becomes storage. And what is storage? Stories are only rare for amusement and pleasure and for pastime. Yes? Knowledge So, this is how so what are the different sources of history? What are the different things to know the proper history? Dear student, the sources depend upon the history that you are studying in. Suppose you are studying the ancient history. What kind of evidences you are supposed to uh, find? What kind of evidences you are supposed to find? What kind of evidences? You will have to rely upon different monuments, different coins, different foreign accounts okay written by the foreign travelers but you will if you are dealing with the medieval history you have to rely upon those things you have to depend upon those things at the same time there were also numerous books came off during that time a number of books also came off during the medieval period because there was development of the uh, there was the uh, invention of paper at the time paper was there in the market at the time so during that time a number of books were also written down okay so you have to uh, believe upon you have to uh, you have to rely upon both kind of books both kind of uh, sources so dear student that time books were basically written upon the chronicles of temples chronicles of the different dynasties or rulers what is chronicles chronicles the events which are written serially or sequentially or chronology that is called chronicles chronicles then books on the petitions and records of the government so uh, different things were there that different sorts of work writings were there in the past that were very very helpful for us to know about the history of the past then che cheating uh, teaching of the saints uh, many morals writings were also there so different sorts of writings were there in the past time that uh, we can uh, rely upon and besides this manuscript was also there 
some manuscript were also there that were dealing with the history of that time. Manuscript what is it? The handwritten, the handwritten writing that was uh, basically written on the palm leaves. Okay, the writings which were written on the palm leaves were called manuscript. Writing were written in hand, so manuscript, and it was stored in the temples, temples, monasteries, and different places like archives. They were called archives also. Presently, you can see archives, Delhi National Archive. Bhubaneswar State Archives. Okay, there you can find plenty, uh, plenty historical books. Bahar sir, historical books are put there. Okay, and besides this, the antiques, the historical things will be preserved. Uh, will uh, you will find there? They have been preserved there. So, dear student, what was happening? A number of books came off. A number of uh, writings came off. But till then, there are no development of printing press and technology there was no printing press and technology so the writers had to write down from the manuscript they have to copy down from the manuscript so therefore the rulers are often uh, and often the common people also employ a large number of uh, scribes in order to copy down the manuscript in order to copy down the old writings so this is how this work was done but not a big problem was there now while they are copying down the original writings now whenever they were failed to recognize it in the writing whenever they were failed to identify a particular words or a particular sentences the scribe automatically putting their own ideas and thought into their writing therefore it is very very hard to believe the original history it is very very hard to believe the history the original history through their writing okay because they were basically putting their own idea into the writing so therefore sometime it appears to be very difficult to know history of the medieval period through their books one such example also there that one such person a chronicler named jiauddin barani what is his name Jiauddin Barani, who wrote a chronicle in the year 1356, okay, and soon after 18, uh, 1356, he written another chronicle of the same writing in 1358, and the writing between the 1358 and 1356 is quite different from one another because he himself could not find his own writing properly. and the original writing remained on reveal remain on disclosed remain on disclosed for a long period of time people could only find it after 1960s so this is how there was some problem in understanding the history through the books however some reliable sources were also there so dear student today i will complete my lecture here i taught you three sub unit of the first chapter that is what what are the three chapters addressing the history in thousand years about the map there are i told you about the new and old terminology how the words been changed to all the time i cited example in hindustan and foreigner with this okay and thirdly how history is known to us what are the different sources to know history okay okay bye for now today so thank you hope this will be a little bit helpful for you try to manage okay read properly after listening my lecture carefully okay thank you so much